Some producers in the Yorkton area have been giving fava beans a try. Unlike peas, they grow well under wet conditions. They fix more nitrogen and are more resistant to root rot diseases such as aphanomyces than peas. So in 2016, the East Central Research Foundation and Parkland College were part of a large study designed to evaluate the impact of various inoculant options on the yield of fava bean. The study was led by Gary Hanatowicz from the Irrigation Crop Diversification Center out of Outlook. Gary's the one who has analyzed the data and prepared the report for the Saskatchewan pulse growers who funded the trial. Other agri-arm research organizations participated in the studies, and these included the Southeast Agricultural Research Farm out of Redvers, the Indian Head Agricultural Research Foundation out of Indian Head, the Northeast Agriculture Research Foundation out of Melfort, the Western Applied Research Corporation out of Scott, and the Wheatland Conservation Area out of Swift Current. Trials were designed to evaluate the effect of different inoculant options on two varieties representing low tannin and normal tannin varieties. Snowdrop was used as an example of a low tannin variety, and CDC SSNS-1 was used to represent normal tannin varieties. Low tannin varieties were bred to be used as feed, as removing the tannin improves feed efficiency. Normal tannin varieties can be used for human consumption, provided they meet other criteria to meet the human consumption market. Traditionally, this means they want large, undamaged seeds that have no browning and no speckling caused by lig ligus bug feeding. So, each variety in this study was tested against eight different inoculant options. The first treatment is the uninoculated check. The rest of the treatments were combinations of nodulator peat, which is applied directly to the seed, or tag team granular, which was seed placed or banded to the side. Nodulator peat was looked at alone and in combination with either a half, a full, or double rate of tag team. The three rates of tag team granular were also looked at in isolation without nodulator peat applied to the seed. With the exception of IHARF, there were no significant differences between the inoculated treatments. At IHARF, nodulator peat yielded significantly more than the half rate of tag team granular, but no other differences could be detected between the remaining treatments. This slide shows the average for all sites combined. Again, there's no significant differences between the uninoculated check and any of the inoculated treatments. However, all inoculated treatments are slightly higher yielding than the uninoculated check. On average, we're about 3.6% higher yielding. There were no interactions between variety and inoculant. In other words, the effect of inoculant was the same between varieties. Overall, Snowdrop significantly outyielded SSNS-1 by about 4%. So, the reason for the lack of response to inoculant is unclear. Faba beans may just be very good at forming associations with native rhizobia. I know at Yorkton, the uninoculated checks started out slower than the rest of the pack, but seemed to catch up. In the end, even the uninoculated checks had healthy nodules. This trial will be repeated again and at all locations next year, and we'll have to just wait and see if we repeat the results or get something completely different. I would never recommend seeding faba beans without the use of inoculant, as rhizobia levels are going to vary between fields. I think inoculant should just be considered cheap insurance.